Welcome to the Heritage Football Show with Coach Chad Frazier. I'm Tom White and Coach, let me be one of the first to congratulate you on your top 10 ranking today. Thank you, sir. After a game like Friday night that was just a, a struggle all around, it feels great to get that top 10 ranking. And we'll get into that along with what to expect this week against Rockdale and some, some other stuff, including some of your Player of the Week awards after we get back from sponsors. The broadcast of tonight's game made possible by Rainforest Production. Conyers Nissan, C2K Electric, Pediatric Center for Wellness, Resurgence Orthopedics, Cafe Milano's, and JLC Gold. Welcome back to the Heritage Football Show with Coach Chad Frazier. Coach, Friday night, big win, tight game all around. Uh, we're going to talk about the first half first. So what are your overall thoughts on the first half? Well, it was a very physical game, Tom. Uh, we knew going in and, and all summer long that both teams were going to return two uh, very stout defenses with a lot of great players on the field. Uh, we also knew that both teams were going to field uh, some young, inexperienced uh, offenses. Uh, we knew it was going to be physical. We knew it was going to be tight. Uh, we felt like special teams were going to play an important role, and they did. And uh, we just felt like if, if we could win the turnover battle and win the special teams, and uh, both teams would would play sound defense uh, that in the end we'd have a chance to be victorious. Now your defensive backs completely shut down a Division I ACC commit. That's true. Uh, Brandon Faison uh, for Northgate is committed to Virginia Tech and uh, he's a phenomenal player at uh, wide receiver and at corner. Uh, also at, at returning kicks and, uh, and our secondary did a tremendous job of uh, playing sound uh, coverage uh, in fact, we had an interception at the end to seal the victory. Um, but I was real proud of them for, because uh, I coached that position personally. So I was real proud of them for uh, playing great run defense as well as pass defense. Now the first half was, was tough offensively, but your, your defense across the board, especially Ty Lundy, Dustin Moore, just, just seemed to step up in every play. There seemed to be one of the two were on top of the ball. True. We, uh, we, we, we moved the ball uh, fairly efficiently in the first half, but, uh, but the turnovers hurt us. Uh, we had four turnovers, which is uh, very uncharacteristic of us in the first half. Uh, and then fortunately, those guys on defense just were lights out. Uh, our four linebackers and, and Ty Lundy and, and Dominique Packer, Chase Offord and Dustin Moore, uh, and then in, in our five linebacker package, when we added Marshall Taplin, uh, they were just relentless. And, uh, and our defensive line played well. Uh, Miles Kitt, Roderick Darden, uh, Derek Nance, uh, some other kids rolled in there as substitutes. Uh, Michael Rayford and Donovan Norfleet uh, just played a great uh, first half of defense and great overall game. Uh, and then our secondary guys, Braxton Morton at free safety and then Steven Everson and Miles Hunter uh, at corners. Uh, we were very sound defensively and, and very uh, aggressive, and Coach Miska called a great game. Uh, in fact, uh, just before the score, uh, right there uh, before the half, they had only had 10 yards of offense, total offense, and then the, and then the score uh, added another 25. So uh, we were pretty good on defense that night. So 35 total yards and a half, not a bad way to start your <laughs> 2011 or 2012 campaign. That, that's true. We, we felt really good about it, and uh, hopefully it'll carry over into the rest of the season. And as a, as, a, as a defensive team, I noticed that they that they just clicked. They seemed to work together. Everybody, you know, seemed to the line seemed to create the holes for the linebackers, and the linebackers um, made Northgate run east to west. They never got the ball turned straight forward. That's true, Tom. We have a, a very aggressive uh, blitz package in our system, and uh, and our kids really understand it. Our coaches do a great job of coaching it, uh, coaching it up, and uh, the kids like it. And so uh, we've been very successful with it. And uh, you're right, those linemen uh, create uh, blitz and lanes for our backers, and our backers are very uh, sound and solid in what they do, and uh, we don't miss many tackles. And so when you, do, when you can do all those things, you're going to be successful on defense. Okay. Well, the first half ended. The score was 7-3. to three. Northgate scored a late touchdown, and we'll get back in just a moment to talk about the second half of Northgate versus Heritage here on the Heritage Patriots Show. <laughs> Yeah. 
Michael Willis takes the toll. It's stopped in the back. Of the Welcome back to the Heritage Football Show with Chad, Coach Chad Frazier. I'm Tom White, and we talked a moment ago about the first half. Now the second half, a lot more of the same in terms of defense, but the offense turned it, turned it around a good bit. Yes, sir. Uh, the offense was able to be a little more efficient in the second half. Uh, defense did a great job of creating turnovers and, and giving the offense a better field position. Uh, special teams came through in a big way uh, with the punt, the punt block, uh, our coverages. Um, our returns, and uh, we were fortunate enough to line up, and uh, out of uh, the three attempts in the second half, we were able to make two of them and win the game. Excellent. And it seemed like uh, Josh Harrison from Northgate tried to take over a little bit, but your, your, your team contained him very, very well. That's true, Tom. They came out and did uh, some things that we had not seen on film, even from last year's film. They got in the shotgun. They've got a six foot or better quarterback and 220 pounds or better and the kid is big and strong he can run it and throw it and uh, they did some things with their formations and motions that that we had not seen but you know i, I think our kids were uh, very good at making adjustments and uh, reading their keys and then we started making plays and slowing that down after uh, a series and uh, you know we, we were fortunate enough to keep them out of the end zone in the second half and uh, score enough points to win the ball game Anytime you win a game, especially a tight game, seven to nine, feels good going home on Friday night and Saturday morning when you're watching tape. And we're going to come back in just a minute and talk about scores from around the region, okay. uh, some some big upsets there and some shakeups in the rankings. And we'll do that in just a moment here on the GHSA.TV network. Small town feel with big time flavor. The Oaks Family Diner on Flat Shoals Road has the home cooked meals that you're looking for. Breakfast served all day, including homemade biscuits and an unmatched selection of omelets. Open from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., the Oaks Family Diner is a crowd pleaser with their daily lunch specials and cakes by Mary. There's something for everyone, so stop by tomorrow at 1040 Flat Shoals Road in Conyers and see what the buzz is all about at the Oaks Family Diner. Randy's Carpet Plus, Rockdale's oldest floor covering store, offers a 10,000 square foot showroom warehouse with quality name brand hardwood floors, laminate, carpet, ceramic tile, and more. And unlike the big box chain stores, our quality control standards are high and we have perhaps the best staff in the flooring business. Rest assured, we take care of all of your needs from start to finish. For a limited time, take advantage of 12 month no payment financing. For the best selection, value, and service for all your flooring needs, make it Randy's Carpet Plus on Dogwood Drive in Conyers. Welcome back to the Heritage Football Show with Coach Chad Frazier. I'm Tom White. And Coach, we're going to look around the league now and just kind of around the region and see whatever, what happened on Friday, Thursday and Friday night. Um, Cedar Shoals opened up against uh, Hart County. Yes, sir. Cedar uh, won 21-0 against Hart County. And uh, Cedar's come, coming off uh, an offseason where they hired a new head coach, a uh, guy out of Florida. And uh, I've heard a lot of good things about him. And uh, looked like a good win for their program to start the 2012 season. And uh, anxious to see them on film, see how good they really are. And here in Conyers, it was uh, Crosstown Rivals, Rockdale and, and Salem. Uh, kind of a, 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 a good tape session for you for next week. <laughs> That's right. The first leg of the Conyers Cup. Uh, Salem beat Rockdale 28-7. Uh, Salem was uh, the benefactor of some turnovers early in the game. Uh, Rockdale is coming off uh, hiring two head coaches this offseason. Um, so I know they're, they're young and, and they're going to have uh, – you know, a lot of room for improvement, but uh, they've got a lot of athletes, and uh, I'm certain they're going to bring a good test Friday night. And the biggest test of the scoreboard in the region last week was uh, Loganville versus Monroe area. That was a, sur a shocker, a real surprise. Uh, I know Monroe has a lot of speed, uh, and that's a, an in-county rival with Loganville, but Loganville's always been big and been able to push people around a little bit, so uh, that score really surprised me. Uh, I know Loganville's breaking in a new quarterback, and a lot of players on defense will be new this year. Um, so I'm anxious to see that film and see how that turned out. And heading out to Appalachia, where they beat on Lanier a little bit. Appalachia's always been very tough. Uh, when, when I first got to Heritage and we were playing Appalachia in the first couple of years, I thought that you know that was a program that I wanted to model uh, Heritage uh, around. Uh, very physical, very strong. Uh, very mentally tough, very physically tough bunch of kids and uh, a lot of smash mouth style on both sides of the ball. So it didn't surprise me that, that they were able to win their opener. And Winder Barrow, 
unfortunately or fortunately, however you look at it, extended their 24 game losing streak to 25 on Friday last week. Yeah, those Coach Wagner and his staff, uh, they're good guys and I know they work hard and they're friends of mine and uh, I know they're gonna get a win soon because uh, I know they've got some great kids and they, and they do the right things. Uh, unfortunately, they got a bad streak going. Jackson County gave them that loss on Friday night and then Flowery Branch, um, another uh, test of the scoreboard per se against a, the top team in, uh, in the region. That's true, uh, probably even the state, yes. And Northside Warner Robins, uh, they would be uh, in the top 10 in any classification. But uh, right now they have a number one ranking in the state. Uh, great tradition over there. They won a few state titles in the past decade and uh, they're gonna be a, a force to reckon with deep in the playoffs. I was really surprised that Flowery was not able to score more than they did. Um, but I know Northside is really tough. And the uh, final on that was 45 to seven after being tied at seven at the half. Uh, Clark Central opened up with Marist at Clark Central. Yes, Clark is always uh, a team loaded with athletes and, and there's no, no difference in that this year. Uh, Marist has always been coached really well and, and they have their share of athletes uh, too. So uh, the first time in history, those schools had, had matched up with each other. So that was interesting that they hadn't played in the playoffs somewhere you know back in history but uh, uh, the score a little surprising um, I thought Clark would have been able to match them athletically um, but I'm sure that option game uh, stymied them a little bit yeah and then finally last Thursday night Gainesville <coughs> against West Forsyth a, a 32 to 30 loss um, not sure the game was quite that close Gainesville scored right at the end to uh, to make it that close West Forsyth is a uh, last year in the in 5A were a uh, quarterfinal team. So uh, they have a great quarterback, they have a great system, a great coaching staff, and uh, a lot of big kids on that team. And Gainesville is really loaded with speed. Uh, they have great tradition. Uh, they have a tempo that is unlike anybody that we'll face all year long, even faster than Flowery Branch, as far as how they get, get, the, get to the line of scrimmage and get that ball snapped and go. So uh, they'll be tough. Right now, I think they're ranked number nine, and uh, uh, even even with a loss, so they're they're a highly regarded team in 5A. Excellent. And we open up uh, region contesting uh, in two weeks against Salem, and uh, we'll be back in just a moment to look at what we can expect tomorrow night against Rockville here on the GHSA.TV network. Randy's Carpet Plus, Rockdale's oldest floor covering store, offers a 10,000 square foot showroom warehouse with quality name brand hardwood floors, laminate, carpet, ceramic tile, and more. And unlike the big box chain stores, our quality control standards are high and we have perhaps the best staff in the flooring business. Rest assured, we take care of all of your needs from start to finish. For a limited time, take advantage of 12 month no payment financing. For the best selection, value, and service for all your flooring needs, make it Randy's Carpet Plus on Dogwood Drive in Conyers. Welcome back to the Heritage Football Show here with Coach Chad Frazier. I'm Tom White, and this week, Conyers Cup action, taking on Rockdale at Rockdale. What yes. can we look forward to? Well, Rockdale is a, is a young team, uh, but they do have a lot of athletes and kids that can really run. Uh, this being an in-county rival, you can never uh, write off anybody. Uh, no matter what they've done in the previous games, uh, you know that going into this, that uh, those guys are gonna be jacked up to play you. Um, especially since we've won uh, the Conyers Cup the last couple of years. Uh, I think the target is on us now. And uh, so our kids are going to have to stay focused. We're going to have to have a great week of practice. And, uh, and we have had a couple of good days now. And so we just need to put it all together uh, and make sure we go out and, and handle our business Friday. So you're playing an, an in-town rivalry and these kids have, have crossed paths many times before. How do you keep your guys focused on, on the ultimate goal of winning the game when they're playing against people that they've grown up with or played in other leagues with? How, how do you do that? How do you keep them focused on the game as opposed to the, 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 you know, the, the infighting amongst friends being somewhat sometimes more important? Well, for us, Tom, it's, uh, we always focus on the next game and within that game, the next play. And for us, we try to preach that the next play is the most important play of the season. Uh, you know, we focus on ourselves getting better this week. We do a whole uh, segment in, in practice on making corrections and improving and making ourselves better and just focusing on what we do and not worry so much about the opponent. Uh, later on, we start to put in what the opponent does and really try to you know, get a sense of what they're gonna try to do to us. And, and for, as far as the in-county rival, 
you know, we, we tell our kids, you know, that, that's, that's a team with a different color jersey, uh, and it's wrong, and, and they shouldn't line up against <laughs> us. So whatever, you know, whoever's going to line up against us uh, is, in, is in the way of what we're trying to accomplish, and we just have to go out and play hard and play fast and play aggressive, but, but most importantly, play smart. And, uh, and, th and that's, you know, that's our strategy uh, every week, and especially in a, in a rival game. Well, well, we'll have the game right here on the GHSA.TV network beginning at 7 o'clock on Friday. And we'll be back in just a moment with, with some player awards and some, and some accolades for players who performed very well last week against Northgate here on the GHSA.TV network. Small town feel with big time flavor. The Oaks Family Diner on Flat Shoals Road has the home cooked meals that you're looking for. Breakfast served all day including homemade biscuits and an unmatched selection of omelets. Open from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., the Oaks Family Diner is a crowd pleaser with their daily lunch specials and Cakes by Mary. There's something for everyone, so stop by tomorrow at 1040 Flat Shoals Road in Conyers and see what the buzz is all about at the Oaks Family Diner. Welcome back to the Heritage Football Show with Coach Chad Frazier. Coach, Friday night, last week, tight game, crazy defensive battle, and uh, I named Dustin Moore, I took the liberty of naming Dustin Moore the Rainforest Production Player of the Game, uh, especially on those last couple of defensive stands. Dustin really, really kind of stood out to me as being, you know, on the ball and, and making the plays. Uh, yes, Tom, you, you, I don't think you could go wrong picking any of those guys over there. Uh, Dustin is a, is a true leader for us. He wears the number one jersey. Uh, that jersey doesn't go to just anybody on our team. Every year it's been that kid that's been special. Uh, in his junior year and then in the off season. And, and Dustin is, is uh, the epitome of a, a, a warrior in the weight room and on the practice field. And then he proved it again on the game field Friday night. Okay. And you, as every coach does, has a, have a list of, of players from the week last week. If you'd share. Yes, sir. We, we do awards uh, every week and it's voted on by our coaching staff. And uh, I'll just go through a few of those. We do an offensive player of the week award. Uh, that award this week goes to Steven Everson. Steven was a wide receiver that uh, I think he had five catches. And he had the big catch on the fade right there at the end that set up the uh, game-winning field goal. Uh, we have a Defensive Player of the Week award. Uh, this week it goes to Ty Lundy. Ty had nine tackles, a uh, sack and a half, uh, four tackles for loss. And uh, it just seemed like every, every play when I was focused on the backfield and what was going on that Ty was in there uh, making plays, it was just – it was crazy how many plays he made. And then our special teams player this week, uh, obviously the man that scored all of our points, and that's Harrison Culp. And Harrison not only did it with uh, the field goals, but he also did it on the kickoff because he, the first one he kicked into the end zone for a touchback. And then the second and third he kicked deep and, and in the corner where we like to so we can trap those guys inside the 20. And then he kicked the sky kick in the end because we weren't going to kick it to their uh, returners and give them a chance to, to score and win the ball game at the end. So he did the sky kick to perfection. So Harrison Culp, our special teams player of the week. And then we also do some other awards. And, and for you fans out there that are at the game and, and you notice our team running out with the flags on Friday nights, those flags are awards uh, for the performance in the, in the previous week. Uh, our USA flag usually goes to a, a, an extra offensive player or special teams player that was nominated uh, for Player of the Week award. And this week it's Tyler Weaver. Tyler Weaver's our punter, uh, and Tyler Weaver's the kid that blocked the punt. And uh, so we had two good candidates for special teams, and so uh, Tyler Weaver's going to carry the USA flag this week at Rockdale. Um, and then we have a Black Death flag, and, and I hear it a lot. Well, why do they have the skull and crossbones or the, sort of the pirate flag? We're not the Buccaneers. Well, that is a defensive uh, award for a guy that maybe not did not win this defensive player of the week but uh, had a great ball game and Derek Nance Derek uh, played really well he ate up blockers all night and he had two fumble recoveries that were huge and, and changed the game for us so Derek Nance will carry that black death uh, defensive flag this week we also have uh, hammer awards uh, we give those out so when you see us come out next week and there's kids have a black stripe on their helmet that's because they had a big snot bubble lick in the previous game and this week we have four of those. We have two offensive linemen. We, we pull our guards a lot, and, and they get a chance to, to hit on those defensive guys. So Dallas Shellnut and Collis Johnson will get Black Stripe Awards. And then defensively, Ty Lundy and Marshall Taplin. Excellent. 
and Tyler Ty Weaver should get that just for the uh, the punt that ended up being a roughing the kicker when yes, uh, yes. Sean Spencer <laughs> runs into him. So, well, thanks, Coach. That wraps. That's going to bring our show to a close today, and we'll have the game tomorrow night. Okay. Seven o'clock for seven thirty kickoff, and uh, we hope to. That if you can't make it to the game, that you'll join us right here on the GHSA.TV network. Tom White for Coach Frazier and James Dinsmore running the controls for us. We'll see you next week.